Today we look at ICSC Physics Class 10, Chapter 3, that is Machines. We will start with the introduction of machines. Machine is simply a device. Okay, we, whenever we think of machines, we assume that machines are some large, uh, big, uh, heavy, heavy uh, things. But uh, in fact, the definition of machine is just a simple device. Okay? What is the purpose of that device? So, the purpose of the device is to overcome a large uh, force that is which is called a load or a resistive force or a load by applying a small force that is the function of the device or this small force is also called effort at a convenient point not only we are overcoming a, a large force by a small force but we are also applying that force at a convenient point and also in a desired direction or gain in a speed. So, these are all the four functions of the machine. So, to put it simply machines are devices which can be used as a force multiplier that means you are lifting a heavy load with a small load that means you are multiplying the force and also speed multiplier that means you are probably giving a small speed to the machine and you are getting a large speed out and also in changing the direction of the effort that means some, sometimes whenever we want to lift a load the application of the effort. Uh, the direction in which that you apply the effort will be inconvenient, but to change that to a convenient direction, we will again use uh, machines or we can even the point of application of the effort also we can change by uh, using the machine. So, these are the four major functions of the machines, but a machine cannot be used as a force multiplier as well as speed multiplier. At the same time, you cannot achieve both the functions by using a single machine. So, you, you need to use two separate machines in case if you need to use them in one operation. Let us take simple and compound machines. What are simple machines and compound machines? Simple machine is the most basic device, is the basic device. Example, inclined plane. Inclined plane is also a machine. We never think inclined plane as a, a machine, but most uh, inclined plane is also a machine which makes the work easier to put it in a very layman language, whichever makes the work easier. So, that is called a machine. So, inclined plane also if you had seen them some coolies lifting the loads or pushing the carts. So, we use inclined planes uh, like this and also we use levers. Lever is also a simple machine, pulley is also a simple machine, wheel is a simple machine, axle is a simple machine and also wheel and axle that is wheel and axle is one. So, this is the wheel and then this is the axle. So, this is the axle. So, wheel and axle is one machine and even wedge is one machine. This is a wedge, wedge is one machine. And also screw, screw is also a machine. What these are all the simple machines. So we have six simple machines: one lever, two pulley, three wheel and axle, and then four inclined plane, and then wedge, and then screw. We also have compound machines. Compound machines are nothing but they are made up of simple machines. If you join two, three simple machines, they are called compound machines. There is some terminology that is associated with these machines. The terminology we need to know before we learn anything about machines. We will look at the terminology one by one. So, the terminology, the first terminology that we need to know is what is a mechanical advantage. First of all, what is load? Load is a very colloquial language, isn't it? We use load, oh, we are lifting load, he is lifting load, I am lifting load like that. But technically, load is the resistive force or the opposing force to be overcome by the machine. That this is the task of the machine. The task of the machine is to oppose or to overcome the resistive force. What is effort? Effort is what what is the force that you are applying on the machine. So, that is what force is force applied on the machine to overcome the load that is your effort. Then what is the mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage is what is the load I am lifting divided by what is the effort that I am applying. So, uh, mechanical advantage is nothing but load divided by effort. Mechanical advantage can be more than one or less than one or equal to one. For example, if my if I am able to lift a large load with a small effort, my mechanical advantage is obviously greater than 1 because the numerator is greater than the denominator. If my if I am able to lift only a little load using a small effort, my mechanical advantage will be less than 1. If my uh, load and the effort both are equal, then, then I will have mechanical advantage equal to 1. If the mechanical advantage is greater than 1, then the machine is used as a force multiplier obviously because you are lifting a large load using the small effort. So, that is called a force multiplier. If the mechanical advantage is less than 1, then the machine is used as speed multiplier 
we will see what the speed multiplier that means you are applying you are giving a small speed and you are getting a large speed out and mechanical advantage is one then uh, ma this machine is used to change the direction of the effort next terminology is velocity ratio what is the velocity ratio the ratio of the velocity of effort to the velocity of the load so velocity ratio is equal to effort by load whereas mechanical advantage is equal to load by effort so you can even remember this mechanical advantage as mla so mla is m l a so which one comes in the numerator is important so load comes in the numerator effort comes in the denominator so m so out of mechanical advantage we will take the first letter m load and then e ml mla or mle and then if you see this velocity ratio velocity ratio is velocity ratio e comes on the top that is effort the velocity of the effort comes on the numerator and the load comes in the denominator it's exactly the reverse of it that is that is how we define the velocity so velocity ratio is velocity of the effort divided by the velocity of the load okay velocity ratio is also defined as the displacement of the effort divided by displacement of the uh, load because velocity we can write it as displacement by time isn't it but the time we are measuring time in both the numerator and denominator we are measuring we are looking at the effort and load for a specified time so the time is same so time gets cancelled so we will be left with the distance traveled by the effort divided by the distance traveled by the load so velocity ratio can be either velocity of effort divided by velocity of load or distance of the effort divided by the distance of the load okay these are the definition of the terms where v is the velocity of the effort vl is the velocity of the load d is the distance moved by the effort distance dl is the distance moved by the load again velocity ratio can be less than 1 if it is less than 1 it is used as a speed multiplier if it is greater than 1 then it is used as a force multiplier if it is 1 then it can be used as a change in the direction of the effort next term is efficiency let's talk about work input and work output uh, before we define efficiency work input means what is the work that we are giving in so that is the work done on the machine by the effort isn't it that is what we are giving in w work output what is the work output work output is work done on the load by the machine isn't it? that is what we are getting machine is doing the work on the load either to lift it or do something so that is what we are getting out so this is work input and this is work output the efficiency is nothing but it is a ratio of the work done on the load by the machine to the work done on the machine by the effort so efficiency can be written as work output how much work output are you getting for the work input that you are given into 100 because efficiency we always express in terms of percentages so what is the work that you are getting out divided by what is the work that you are giving in into 100 okay that can i can also write work output as work i can write it as force multiplied by distance work if you know uh, work power energy in work power energy work we can write it as force multiplied by distance we can write it as this way isn't it so work output that is the force is equal to nothing but the load correct so load we are lifting this load that is the output multiplied by distance of the load isn't it so this is, this is the output work force multiplied by distance similarly what is we are giving in we are giving in the effort so that is why work input is equal to effort multiplied by distance moved by the effort i can now take this e l l by e and then i can write it i can write this ratio as l by e divided by d e by dl i can write it as this way because both are same both both these are same so if you see l by e will become down e become e will come to the denominator and then dl will goes to the uh, numerator so th both this and this are equal i just rearranged it for a reason so what is l e, l by e l load by effort is nothing but mechanical advantage we have seen load by effort is mechanical advantage whereas d by dl is what it is velocity ratio so efficiency can be expressed in terms of me mechanical advantage by velocity ratio as well not only in terms of work work input and work output but also in terms of mechanical advantage uh, and uh, divided by velocity ratio before we close let's look at an ideal machine and also an actual machine what is an ideal machine while analyzing the machine we will always assume the machine to be ideal not the actual machines what is an ideal machine ideal machine means there is no loss of energy 
whatever energy that we are giving in that is also we are getting out then efficiency of that machine would obviously be 100 percent because there is no loss of energy whatever the work that we are giving whatever the energy that we are giving in the same energy we are getting out that means efficiency of that machine is 100 percent but actual machines are not like that isn't it they, there will be some loss of energy efficiency will always be less than 100 percent for example why would the uh, uh, energy will be lost in terms of friction, if you see friction uh, in a machine, there, are, there will be moving parts. These moving parts, uh, there will be a friction between these moving parts. Because of this friction, some energy will be lost. Sometimes uh, parts of the machine are also not elastic. They will deform. While deforming the material, you need to spend some energy. So, energy will also be lost in deformation of the parts. And sometimes the parts are not perfectly rigid. That means there will be a deflection of the parts. Instead of... Uh, uh, a part moving this way, probably it might move this way and this way and then some energy will be lost in displacing this way. So, there will be a deflection of the parts also will be there because of the deflection of the parts also uh, we will lose some energy. This is the difference between an ideal machine and an actual machine, but in our analysis we will always assume machines to be ideal. So, there is one more uh, concept that you need to know what is the principle of a machine, principle of a machine or a principle of ideal machine. The principle of the ideal machine is equal to that is what the assumption that we make that is work input is equal to work output that is what work input that we are giving in is equal to work output that is the principle of the machine that we assume that comes directly from this uh, assumption that ideal machine there is no loss of energy so that's why whatever work that you are giving in that the same work that you will get thank you